So uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the uh, neurosurgery and um, focused ultrasound group at Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center uh, at the University of Toronto. So uh, we currently have a, uh, a trial of blood-brain barrier opening uh, with concomitant chemo uh, therapy drug delivery uh, in uh, high-grade gliomas, so in grade four uh, astrocytomas. So um, a bit about our study. So uh, GBM, uh, we, we know a bunch about the background, so briefly, uh, to diffuse brain disease. We know that what we see on an MRI scan, when we see patients in our, in our office, uh, what we see on the MR, uh, on the contrast-enhanced MR, in fact, is just part of the picture, uh, in that in many cases, by the time patients come to, to our offices, they actually have a diffuse uh, brain disease. Uh, and we know that uh, even if you sample uh, the brain on the opposite hemisphere, in the corpus callosum, uh, you often find malignant cells uh, in that area as well. So the uh, leading edge of the tumor is but one part of the story. In fact, it is a brain-wide disease that uh, necessitates, uh, most likely, a brain-wide solution. We also know uh, we have very good uh, preclinical data that uh, well-defined acoustic power uh, can be used to open the blood-brain barrier, uh, that it's relatively safe uh, with small petechial hemorrhages occasionally seen, but extravasation kept at a minimum. Uh, there's generally uh, no axonal disruption uh, with low-frequency focused ultrasound, and that we can get uh, chemotherapeutic and other compounds into the brain uh, with uh, focused ultrasound. So we uh, designed a study uh, that would be an open, prospective, single-arm, non-randomized study that would enroll six patients with uh, glioblastoma, so we're with presumed high-grade uh, malignant gliomas. We would use uh, Insitex Exablate 4000 transcranial 220 kilohertz system together with Definity microbubble ultrasound contrast and uh, Myoset, which is a liposomal uh, doxorubicin. Uh, doxorubicin is an anthracycline anti-tumor antibiotic, uh, and a few words about that. So there's ample preclinical evidence uh, provided by, uh, for example, uh, Dr. McDaniels and Dr. Heinen's labs uh, suggestive excellent anti-tumor activity in uh, gliomas, and there's also a robust clinical evidence suggesting that this uh, is an effective anti-glioma uh, anti or anti-tumor uh, uh, chemotherapy regime. We also know that there's very, very little penetration across the blood-brain barrier, and that is one of the obstacles for uh, this uh, chemotherapy regimen. Our inclusion criteria are men or women between the ages of 18 and 70 who are able to give uh, consent, so we want to make sure that they understand uh, what's involved in the study. Currently, uh, we are enrolling patients with malignant brain tumors confirmed by biopsy or suspected based on imaging. Uh, the tumor needs to be clearly defined on an MR, uh, and we have some geographic considerations for the tumor. Patients have to be well enough for surgery. So these are patients, we use the Karnofsky uh, performance scale, so these are patients who are still ambulatory is still able to get around uh, and are relatively well and minimally symptomatic. Um, they have to be safe uh, from an anesthesia perspective to undergo surgery and able to communicate exactly what they feel during the procedure. So I uh, may not be visible, uh, the study outline here, but uh, essentially this is a two-staged procedure whereby patients come in, they have a chemotherapy infusion, they undergo focused ultrasound, we confirm it with gadolinium enhancement. The next day, uh, patients have an operation uh, to have the tumor removed. What we do is we sonicate uh, uh, both inside the tumor um, and we sonicate outside the tumor as well, and we send four tissues for biopsy. We send son sonicated tumor, non-sonicated tumor. We, we send uh, brain that has been sonicated and brain that has not been sonicated. And what we're measuring there is uh, doxorubicin levels uh, at each of these uh, four spots. Uh, this is a video, I'm not sure if we can run it, but we can have it run in the background here. But essentially, again, to summarize, patient is infused with calyx, which is uh, lipidi lipidized the doxorubicin. Uh, head is shaved, stereotactic frame is applied. Patients enter uh, uh, or have the helmet applied, they enter at the MRI, they're sonicated, uh, and then uh, is verified with the gadolinium, and they're admitted to the hospital for observation. On day two, uh, patients, uh, we use uh, sort of MR-guided neuronavigation to uh, sample uh, the lesions uh, from the tumor as well as from the brain that have been sonicated in areas that have not been sonicated. And uh, we as well resect the tumor as is the normal standard of care for patients with, uh, with GPM. 
Uh, we uh, sonicate a three by three grid with three millimeter spacing, 300 milliseconds at each spot. There is sort of the, the, the algorithm that we use. Total sonication time is 50 seconds, 2.6 milliseconds on, 30.4 milliseconds off. Some of the technical uh, details. Uh, this is the first uh, patient that we've treated. So you can see on the right side, uh, there's a T2 uh, weighted image on the right side in the temporal lobe. Uh, uh, you see a lesion uh, that's a heterogeneously uh, uh, of, of consistency, heterogeneous consistency. And this is the first target where we're sonicating the actual posterior part of the tumor in the posterior temporal lobe. And this is the second target, uh, which is outside uh, of, of the tumor as well, or on the very edge of it. So this is the, uh, the first MR uh, of, uh, uh, of a patient, a GAD-enhanced T1-weighted MR. Uh, it's the first patient to have undergone uh, non-invasive blood-brain barrier uh, opening anywhere. Uh, and you can see uh, that three by three grid there in the posterior part of the temporal lobe, two areas of enhancement, one within the tumor, one immediately adjacent to it, indicating that indeed the blood-brain barrier had been opened and that uh, gadolinium uh, had, uh, had managed to enhance. So currently, uh, uh, we're, we're undergoing uh, histologic and uh, uh, fluoroscopic analysis of the tissue. Uh, I can say that there is clear quantitative evidence of significant differences in gadolinium enhancement in sonicated areas versus non-sonicated areas. And there's also suggestive of uh, increased uh, uh, chemotherapy uh, levels within uh, the tumor, but those results are still pending. We're continuing to, to enroll. One note uh, that I did want to make is uh, a recent uh, uh, paper uh, that was published uh, indicating that even patients with low-grade gliomas, so these are uh, grade two diffuse astrocytomas as well as uh, oligoastrocytomas and oligodendrogliomas, there's now evidence that these patients actually benefit significantly from uh, upfront surgery followed immediately by radiation therapy and chemotherapy. So this is the first evidence that a multi-pronged aggressive approach to low-grade gliomas almost actually confers a survival benefit, the first uh, suggestion of that. So this uh, could be used as a potential rationale to include lower grade tumors in these kinds of studies, suggesting that they may in fact benefit from subsequent adjuvant therapy. Uh, so I'd just like to acknowledge uh, the FUS Foundation for the funding, Insight Tech for the terrific support, uh, Dr. Heinonen and uh, the Focus Ultrasound team uh, at SRI, uh, and Drs. Todd Mainprize, Ryan Alkins, and the oncology team at Sunnybrook, Allison Bethune, and of course the patients. Thanks very much.